If you ever plan on improving one of your tennis strokes, especially if you've been playing tennis for a little while, then this lesson is extremely important for you to watch. I've been working on improving my one-handed backhand for about a year and a half, and in this video, I'm gonna give an update on my progress. And it's going to be incredibly important context, and you're gonna learn a lot along the way about how improvement works. And if you don't understand these things, then trying to make an upgrade to your game can be super frustrating. You can end up just kind of chasing your own tail and giving up in the end. So let's dive right into it. Here's a little bit of context on my game. I started playing tennis with a one-handed backhand around 1995. I actually started with a two-handed backhand, but my two-handed backhand was super awkward and terrible. So I gave up on it and I switched to a one-hander when I was about 14 or so. And so then I played nine years of competitive tennis that includes high school, that includes division two college tennis, nine years of grooving that shot. Even though I didn't use the drive a whole lot, I mostly sliced. Um, this is competition time where th that was my focus was doing the same swing the same way again and again and again. And that was the best I had. I just didn't know any better. So that brings us up to 2004 when I graduated from college. And that entered me into my period of focusing on coaching and not playing matches at all. And many of you watching this can totally relate to this. You've you started a career, maybe you started a family, and so you've had to take a long break. And for me, like I was on the courts. Yes, I was, you know, physically hitting tennis balls. But those of you who are in the tennis industry know this phrase, uh, customer tennis. It was facilitating a learning environment for my students. And so for 16 years up until 2020, I continued to repeat that same habit that I used throughout high school and college. So for 16 years, I continued to groove in those, those bad patterns. If you wanna know what those bad habits were, you can go back, just do a search for, I'll put the links in the, the first comment down below. So in total, we have 25 years of me using my old, crappy kind of shovel push like crappy drive i never was able to hit topspin 25 years of playing the game of tennis i i mostly relied on my slice until 2020 is when i made the decision that's it like just kind of for my own satisfaction for my own like i, I wanted to experience what it was like to try to develop a good one-handed backhand instead of bailing out and using the slice so in 2020 i started working on the new swing. And so this context is critical. If you've been playing tennis or hitting tennis balls for a long period of time, using an old inefficient habit that's holding you back, it's critical that you're realistic about how many times over these 25 years, I've probably repeated the old bad habit hundreds of thousands of times, maybe millions of times. And I also uh, grooved in the habit of falling back on the slice and not really using the drive because I, I knew it wasn't very good. So this is timeline number one. Now let me kind of break this period down for you a little bit and let you know what's happened over the last year and a half. Everything you see on this list, you can go verify on my YouTube channel. Back in 2018, I, we started doing a little bit of experimentation with match play. And the first match we uploaded to the channel was me playing Kevin Garlington. And if you go watch that match, I didn't drive a single backhand. I hit all slices and just ran around my backhand and tried to hit as many forehands as possible. In 2019, I played a match against Scott at playercourt.com. And again, I didn't drive my backhand at all. I ran around my backhand, hit forehands, and hit all slices. No topspin backhands. And so this, this is a pretty fair representation of my habit going into this project. I just didn't hit it. Same thing in high school and college, like I very rarely hit it. It was, it was all slices and I didn't even have the ability to hit topspin. It was just kind of a flat, straight, kind of a pushy drive. Okay, so that brings us up to June of 2020. That's when I started working on the new swing. And you'll see I played Ira in September of 2020. And I even talk about it at the beginning of the match. Man, I'd, I'd love to use my new backhand a little bit, but we'll just, I just kind of have to feel it out, see what happens. I read totally dictated that entire match, kind of steamrolled me, and I threw out the new backhand really quickly after, this was after a couple months of, of working on it. In October, I got injured, 
and that gave me some more opportunity to work on it uh, on my own time. And throughout 2021, you'll see me playing matches, you'll see me training, and in match play, I mostly avoided it, but I would hit it when I was comfortable, balanced, and kind of set up ahead of time. In training, I worked on it a lot, and you'll see, you can, again, go back. You can watch me hitting with the ball machine, watch me training with Coach Eric, watch me hitting with Scott, and watch me hitting with Mark, doing cooperative rallies, and you'll see me progress in my ability to hit it outside of match play. But in match play, I still didn't use it a whole lot, and we'll talk about why. Uh, in a minute. And so that's kind of, I'm really glossing over this quickly for those of you with, with short attention spans. And in uh, today, February 2022, just a couple days ago, we published a training session where I was playing out points, competitive baseline points against Michael Trice, uh, who's a former D1 tennis player. And I was avoiding the slice and I'm to the point now, I'm very close. I, I feel I'm very close where in match play, I'm gonna to start to really be able to hit it confidently. It's slowly but steadily getting there. And so this is kind of a, a little broad like overview here. This is what the timeline has looked like. After the 25 years of the old bad habit, this is what the last year and a half of work has looked like. It's not that I'm learning how to hit a backhand for the first time. Really, the hard part is rewiring my body and rewiring my brain away from those 25 years of bad repetitions and towards the new one, the better one, that is actually more functional and more effective. So now that you have an idea of the, the timeline, let's talk about some key principles here that can help you overcome that obstacle of the old bad habit. If you're thinking about undertaking a big challenge like what I've done, try to reverse 25 years of bad habits on any given shot, here's the key considerations that you want to keep in mind. And this is why I believe I'm, I've really moved in a very positive direction. And a year and a half might sound like a long time, but when you compare it to the 25 years of doing it the wrong way, it's actually not that long of a time. It's actually relatively short. So here's kind of key number one, the level of challenge that you're giving yourself. If the challenge is too high, then you won't do the new thing well. And then you're just wasting your time on the practice court. And so this is why I've kind of bailed out on the drive and match play over the last year and a half a lot. And we'll talk about balancing match play and practice in, in a minute. But in match play, it's mostly been above the level of challenge where I can do the new one correctly. And so because I've had zero comfort and confidence or frankly ability to do the new one, I've mostly gone back to the slice until relatively recently. Relatively recently, I've started to get a little bit more confidence switching back and forth. I've been able in training to hit the drive when it's repetitive and it's like a cross court rally, but going from forehand to backhand, forehand to backhand and finding the new swing has been a big challenge for me over the last year and a half. And just recently, I've started to be able to do that. And hopefully soon in match play, I'll, I'll be doing it pretty exclusively and not relying on, on the slice anymore. But up until pretty recently, I, match play has presented too much challenge. I haven't had comfort or confidence, and so I would revert back to the, the slice. So you want to make sure you, you, you manage your level of challenge so that you make progress and you don't just stay stuck. Another key consideration is winning versus development. Frequently, you need to choose between the two in match play. Do I want to commit to the new stroke, which I know I'm going to make more errors, I know I'm going to give more points to my opponent, or should I go back to the old one, or in my case, go back to the slice, which I know is reliable, but it's going to keep me from progressing and keep me from advancing the new shot that I know is going to be better down the road. I've just recently started to be able to kind of have a little bit of a choice. In my recent match against Peter and a more recent match against uh, Chris, I could have made the choice to work on the new backhand, uh, but instead I opted to kind of charge the net instead of staying back and maybe working on, okay, in a match scenario, let's work on really driving the backhand confidently. I wanted the, I wanted the win, and I knew coming into the net was going to be my better option. It was going to give me a better chance of winning. And I won both of those matches and I feel satisfied with that decision. At the end of the day, it's a subjective choice. You need to make for yourself and I need to make for myself what's more valuable to me in the short run and in the long run. 
Is it developing and committing to the new habit and not going back to the, the old one or going back to the slice in my case? Or do I really, like for my own confidence and my satisfaction, like do I really want to win this match? And I know some other tool is going to do a better job. It can be really challenging to, to pick, but it's up to you. It's totally subjective. So that brings us to balancing matches and training is super important. If you do more training than matches, then you have a much better chance of moving the needle. Because when you play matches, you're going to feel that pressure of wanting to get the W and not wanting to lose and, and shoot yourself in the foot or let your teammates down or, or let your doubles partner down or, or whatever it is. And so there's additional pressure in matches to go back to the old habit or to use the crutch, to use whatever the, the stand-in is for the new, better habit. And to be honest with you, I, I, I think I've, I've probably done about 60 or 70% training and about 30% or 40% matches, maybe a little bit more for training. And so that's why I, I haven't felt too bad about in match play going back to the slice because I'm putting in a good amount of volume on the, the practice court enough that I feel like I am still moving the needle and I am progressing. In the future, though, I want to do more matches, and I do want to commit to the new drive. Eventually, it's going to happen. But the more matches you play, especially really challenging ones, you're going to have very little chance of progressing. Because even if you do commit to the new habit, if you haven't practiced it or trained it enough yet to be second nature, it's not going to be good quality anyway. And so you'll end up, you know, just kind of, uh, not only will you lose the match, but the quality of the repetition wasn't good, and so it doesn't help you progress anyway. And so it's like a double, a double whammy. All right, finally, if you uh, looked at the comments at all my, our, of our last upload where I was working with uh, Michael Trice, I had a, a really frustrating patch of repetitions with Michael. And I, I've received so many hundreds of uh, unsolicited pieces of feedback about what everybody thinks my problem is with my, my backhand. Meanwhile, I feel really happy and satisfied with the progress I'm making. Like if you look at those old uh, matches, uh, let's see, where are we here? If you uh, look at these old matches against uh, Kevin, against Scott, um, you're going to see no drives, <laughs> zero ability. And so the fact that I have any ability to hit the new one in point play, even though it might not be quite real matches yet, I have done it, but it's just a little bit, like little pockets here and there. I feel really thrilled about that. And when I watch my repetitions in training uh, with hand feeds, with a ball machine, with cooperative rallies, I'm starting to hit really solid shots. It's not all the time. And to be clear, I have a lot to work on. Most of you leaving comments saying, hey, Ian, you're not doing X, Y, or Z. You're totally right. And I know that. I know I'm still missing a lot. I, I've come a long ways and I've developed a lot, but I still have a lot of work to do. It's critical to understand that learning a new habit, especially rewriting an old habit, means you can only consciously focus on one thing at a time. I can't focus on a stronger coil and keeping my racket up on the take back and dropping my racket into slot position and having a wider stance and stepping forwards, and uncoiling from the hips, and letting my follow through release. I've been told all of those things <laughs> just in the last probably three days. Uh, all of those things have been told to me, and they're all good things. They're all great. But I know as a coach that when I'm working with a student, I can only ask them to realistically focus on one thing. I can't throw all that stuff at them and hope that they're possibly going to juggle all of it. It's, it's literally impossible for the mind to keep track of all those things and manage the body when none of them are habits. So you have to pick one thing. And it's one of the hardest things about coaching and about learning is picking what's the most important thing, the most foundational, fundamental thing that'll help everything else that's being built on top of it. So. It's impossible to focus on more than one thing. And hopefully I'm picking the most important thing. And I feel good about it. I feel good about the progress I'm making. And I want to, you know, I want to say thank you. Mo the vast majority of you leaving comments and saying, Ian, you're forgetting about X, Y, or Z. I know exactly what you're talking about and you're totally right. And I'm leaving it on the back burner for now until I feel really solid and confident about enough things that are underneath it that I can add more thoughts and I can add more pieces to the puzzle. But in the meantime, 
feel really good about the progress I'm making. And so this is a little bit of uh, perspective uh, for, for all of you that have been following along. Most of you don't probably understand this uh, timeline. And I just, I wanted to share this perspective because so many of you following me have aspirations of playing better tennis and you've already been playing tennis for a while. And it's critical to understand that your past habits can't, you can't just snap your fingers and make them disappear, no matter how bad you wanna do it. And by the same token, you can't just snap your fingers and decide to do five new things the right way. You gotta pick one thing and master it and then move on to the next thing. All of these considerations are, are critical to making improvements while you play the game of tennis. So hopefully this has been helpful. If it has, please do me a favor and click the like button. It helps the videos, it helps the channels. It helps this channel out. It helps more players see this video and hopefully help them make progress in their game. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.